In this video, I'll show you a low content brand that is doing $78,000 a month on Amazon KDP. What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. If you're new to the channel, my name is Sean and I've built a multiple six figure KDP business, which I eventually sold for $820,000. And now I'm building my second KDP account. So in this channel, I basically just share you my own journey of publishing books on Amazon, uh, give you income reports, you know, share you strategies on what exactly am I doing to get these kind of results. So if you want no BS publishing advice from someone who's still actively publishing, then make sure to subscribe. And if you do want a completely free training on how I built a KDP brand to that level, then there's a link in the description that you guys can go and take a look. All right, so today in this video, I just wanna go over a low content brand that is extremely successful. If you've been around for a little while and if you've been publishing and doing low content uh, books especially, you've probably seen this brand around. But for those who are new, it might be very interesting to go over and kind of talk about what it's doing, how it built this business, and exactly what kind of strategies that we can learn from and implement into our brand as well. So the brand that we're gonna be talking about is Coco Rio, and this is a basically a coloring book brand. So if you look at these books, it has extremely detailed, very, very beautiful uh, coloring books, and basically like a bunch of different topics, right, or themes. So there is no one set theme in terms of, you know, the kind of coloring book uh, that they create. Because this one is Beauties in Fairyland coloring book, right? And then now it's Life Inside Jar. So kind of similar, like magical fairyland kind of thing. Uh, and then we have Mushroom and then Horror Beauties. So I guess like the theme is fairly similar on these one, but then it completely changes here into like Spooky Girl coloring book. So even the, the art style is completely different, right? And we got Tiny Cats coloring book. Once again, the art style is completely different. Also, the theme is completely different. Weird Couple coloring book, Creepy Doll coloring book. And these three is fairly similar in terms of themes because now we have this one, which is a Gothic Lolita princesses, right? So even the art style is different. So what can we assume from this? And uh, sorry, there's another one, Simple Patterns coloring book, completely different to all the other uh, coloring books out there. So most likely this brand is using multiple different illustrators. Uh, so they have a team of illustrators, you know, creating coloring books for them. And that would explain why they have such different styles for all of their books, right? And it seems to be working. You know, some of the books are doing extremely well, some aren't doing well, but you know, they're just focusing over time on what worked uh, the best. So if you go and take a look at this on Katie Spy, or you can do this on Bookbeam too, but Overall, you can pull up to 100 books. So they have at least 100 books. Uh, Katie Spy doesn't pull more than that, so maybe they have more than 100 books. But you can see that it's doing $78,000 in revenue per month, which is absolutely crazy. Uh, this is revenue, not profit, so the profit is lower. But I would say it's uh, pretty high up there. They're definitely doing multiple six figures in profit. Actually, you can see how many books they have. It's 174 titles, it shows right here. And I sorted by publication date, and you can see that the style they have now and the style they had before is uh, very different. Actually, from the beginning, they just had completely different themes all over the place. You can see that it started with these kind of designs, and then they improved it into more of the style that you see now. And then also the uh, kind of a horror theme. So. Once again, they're really all over the place. And I think that's what's very interesting about this is they're not really doing a ton of keyword research. Uh, they're just simply coming up with a new coloring book in whatever theme that they, they can think of. And they are very, very creative in terms of the themes of the coloring books, right? But in terms of the keyword itself, it's literally just coloring book, that's it. Or coloring books for adults. And besides that, they go off of themes, which is cute Christmas, uh, midnight Dream, Easy Color, Winter coloring books, you know, Simple Things coloring books. And what's really cool about this is if you can create coloring books, if you know how to do it, then there's so many different themes that you can branch off from. Just within the Christmas theme right here, you don't have to do a cute Christmas. You can do like, you know, horror Christmas or creepy Christmas, um, kawaii Christmas or whatever different, you know, themes that you see in uh, coloring books, right? And you can apply the same thing in pretty much all of this. It doesn't have to be winter, it can be summer, spring, fall. And so there are essentially unlimited 
ideas that you can go into and create coloring books off of. Even this one, right? Fancy hats coloring book. So they are definitely creative in terms of the themes that they're coming up with because I would never uh, think of these kind of, you know, topics, I guess. But fancy hats, fancy shoes, fancy shirts, you can, you know, branch off in so many different ways. So essentially they can just keep creating coloring books like this uh, unlimited amounts of time. So I just sorted by popularity. So these are their top books at the moment. Let's go and open it up and uh, see how much each one is making. So let's open up these five. And uh, since I have the BookBeam plugin, I can see how much it's estimately making uh, in terms of actual royalties. So this is royalties, not sales. So this is how much you actually get paid. So this book itself, Beauties in Fairyland uh, coloring book, is making between $211 to $318 every single day at a BSR of 2000. So uh, obviously doing extremely well. Now we have Life Inside Jar coloring book. This is $180, $267. And we have the Mushroom coloring book, which is making between $71 and $84 a day. And then we have the Horror Beauties coloring book, which is doing 65 to 78 dollars every single day and the spooky girl coloring book that has the bestseller badge uh, is doing between 81 to 107 dollars per day so obviously this brand is making thousands of dollars every single day uh, i would assume it's probably doing 50 60 70 thousand dollars a month uh, which is multiple multiple six figure even close to a million dollars uh, in terms of the revenue that they're pulling in. Now, in terms of pricing uh, strategies, it doesn't seem like they have a pretty set way of doing things. I've seen books that are, you know, $5.99, $6.99, uh, and this one is $8.99. So it seems like the more reviews it gets, they keep raising the price and keep testing new price point. Obviously, the higher price the book is, the better, as long as it keeps selling. So, you know, once you start getting more and more reviews, you can start uh, asking for a higher price and people still buy. So that's exactly what they're doing. This is their best selling book. It has a ton of reviews. So that is why they keep raising the price to increase their profit margin. In terms of the book structure, though, it is very, very similar. Almost every single one or pretty much all of the books is 8.5 by 11 inches because that is the standard size for coloring books. And then it has 88 pages. So Every single book has 88 pages and it has 40 stunning illustrations or basically 40 you know, pages to actually color. So this is a pretty standard thing in coloring books, but one side is just a blank or a black page. I'll show you some examples here. And then the other side is the actual coloring page to prevent bleed through of the colors to the other page, right? Because if you have uh, coloring pages on both sides and you know you color one side and you can see the color on the other side you don't want that so these are all single-sided coloring pages but you can also look at that by looking inside here and you can see the kind of uh, images that they have uh, really 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 highly detailed uh, images here but another thing that they're doing that you can definitely implement is asking for a review uh, quickly, you know, at the beginning of the book. So they have this one page call to action asking for a couple things. Uh, one is to leave a review. So please share your experience on the Amazon, right? So that is basically asking for feedback reviews and then also, uh, check in them out on social media. So it looks like they got a full social media channel, uh, website, you know, support as well, but this is a great way to get additional reviews, uh, convert your readers into reviewers a lot more simply by asking, because a lot of times people don't really do things unless you ask them. So, you know, don't be afraid to ask for reviews, uh, and don't be afraid to get negative reviews because the truth is, you know, if your book is not good, then obviously you'll get negative reviews by asking for reviews, but that is not the point of publishing, right? We're not trying to spam, you know, low quality books. Hopefully you guys are producing high quality books that you guys can get behind and is confident about so that, you know, asking reviews isn't scary. Another thing that this brand is doing is collecting people's email addresses and building their email list. So you can see that, you know, access my free digital coloring book. So they're offering uh, 50 pages from their bestsellers. So the cool thing about paperbacks is there is no KDP select exclusivity rules. So you can actually sell your book on KDP or Amazon, and then still offer it on your website or somewhere else for free because, you know, once again, the KDP select uh, rule does not apply to paperback books. So 
they're essentially you know selling these pages but they're taking perhaps one page or a couple pages you know of each from their best sellers compiling that into a i guess one big pdf and then they're offering it as a, a digital copy for people who goes to their website and signs up to their email list. So if you're doing a coloring book brand or even other low content brand, you can apply this exact same concept to build your own email list as well. This is their website. You can see that it looks pretty good with a bunch of samples. Um, the loading time is a little slow, but you can see that, you know, this is, they're showing the bestseller. They are, essentially linking to the book on Amazon, I believe, if I click on it. Actually, the page came back as an error, so it looks like they haven't really fixed their website uh, in a while. And also the loading time, once again, is super slow. I think they're not getting a ton of traffic or a ton of sales from their website, and that's usually the case, to be completely honest. A lot of times, building a website is a waste of time. Uh, the number one you know, return on investment in terms of your time and your effort is just publishing more books rather than building out your website, doing social media marketing, those kind of things. So this brand, they're doing social media marketing. However, I believe they're not getting a ton of uh, sales from there as well. Even the page that they supposed to be collecting the, the email addresses for, so this is their landing page, is also not working. So I guess they're not really collecting, you know, emails and building their email list and also the blog as well so this is where a lot of beginners make their mistake is they see these top brands with you know a blog and social media channels and a website and they think that they have to do it themselves as well but as you can see here they're probably not making a ton of money from it so you don't really have to do those things uh really just focus on publishing more books and running amazon ads that's like the most important things uh that'll get you the most money but Email list building is important. This uh, page is not working, so they're missing out on a lot of subscribers. But besides that, you don't really have to try and copy and you know create a website like this. Another thing that they are doing excellently is have a really, really nice A plus content. So you can see that every single A plus content that they have is fully customized to the book that they have. You can see the illustrations, people coloring it in. So you actually like the coloring pages with colors inside. Um, so that is super high quality A plus content. If you can create something like this, it'll be very, very good. Although it's definitely much harder because you have to, you know, order the book yourself, color it in, take a picture and then upload it. Right. So it's a, a lot more work, but if you can do it, it'll be very, very powerful. Another thing is to promote your other books. This is huge in terms of A plus content. If you can do this because the same customer can buy multiple of your books, you can have this a plus content uh, block. I forgot what it's called, but you can add this so that people can come down here and they can click on it and then they can get to your other books and purchase from there. So that is probably the best A plus content block that I recommend, which is this one. So you can promote your other books. Same as this page, something similar, just you know, showcasing your other products is a very, very, very effective strategy. So overall, an amazing brand, absolutely crushing it, making a ton of money. Uh, and there are some strategies that you can go and definitely model, you know, from and implement it in your business as well. But the bottom line is, I believe the way this business became successful is simply publishing extremely high quality coloring books one after another. I think if it comes down to one thing that they did right, it'll be that is just simply having an extremely good book. The little strategies such as asking for reviews and, you know, A plus content, those kind of things helps a little bit, but the biggest impact definitely was just having an extremely good book and customer buys one, they're impressed by it and they come back and buy another one and so on and so on. Especially with coloring books, I feel like there's more of a collector's kind of, you know, strategies where people who likes coloring books, they would just buy a bunch of them, right? So if you have a good brand built up with a bunch of products that you can offer to the customer, then they will come back and buy more and more and more and more over time. And so over time, this brand and the name of Coco Rio probably became established and now they just have a bunch of repeat customers. I'm assuming that's the case to the point where, you know, most coloring books that they publish, uh, the same customers will come and purchase it. And over time, if you start making money, you can take that profit and invest it back into hiring new illustrators so that you can go and tap into different themes, right? And also publish books faster. 
And now you start making more money and you take that profit, invest it back into hiring a different illustrator that can you know, tap into a different theme and different design styles, right? And that is probably how they slowly built up a team of illustrator, you know, going into many, many different themes, art styles, topics, and uh, just kept on publishing and kept on running ads. And I think that is how they scaled and that is how they will continue to scale from here. And that's something that anybody can do, right? You start publishing a few books, take the profit and invest it back into outsourcing the work so you can publish faster. And then you can you know, keep publishing, publishing, and then you make more money and you do the exact same thing. Take the profit, invest it back into you know, building your team. And so you can produce books faster. And so that is how you can slowly scale and to the point where it becomes a snowball effect. You know, there's less work that you're doing because you're outsourcing, but you're making a lot more money because of it. So that is my review of this brand. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you do like these videos of me commenting on different brands and, you know, kind of talking about what I think they did and uh, what is the best strategies that you can go and implement, uh, leave a like and let me know in the comments so I can go and make more of these. And before you go, if you do want a completely free training on how I built a multiple six figure KDP business, then the link to the training is in the description, as well as all the tools and resources that I recommend for your self publishing business. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you guys in the next one.